So I'm back on the video backup system again today and I'm going to look at the file system backup mode this time. I've already loaded the software up from the VBS floppy disk. As you can see here, that's now running and everything's all set up. So I'm going to go to file system backup and the first thing it will do is ask you for the path uh, where the files are that you want to back up. So this is like the root directory where your files are going to be located. Uh, so I'm going to put DF0 and I'm going to take out the VBS disk and I've got a modules disk that I've found and we're going to use that to do the testing. So I hit OK on that and the VBS software then will read the floppy disk and look for the files that are on there. Now this disk's only got files in the root directory anyway so you can see this list here and you can actually click on these to select and deselect them so you can see at the top here there's a count of the number of files and directories that have been selected for the backup and it also totals up the total amount of data that we're going to be backing up as I exclude them that goes down as I include them that goes back up at the top here we've got some menu options obviously this is similar to the floppy disk system where you can start a backup or cancel but we've got these extra options here now if we do include files that will select everything that's in the currently active directory which obviously here is the root directory and you can obviously exclude them all as well that's just a quick way to go in and out of folders and either select or deselect files by default it actually selects all the files in all the folders and assumes that you want to back everything up now at the bottom here there's also this long file list option which is quite useful and you can then see more details of the files here so you've got the file name the file size in bytes attributes of the file and a date and time stamp also on this list here you'll see there's this exclude all archived and include all archived option now what that does is select or deselect files that have the archive attribute set or not so if i say exclude all archive files nothing happens because we've got nothing selected so if I select all the files first and then do exclude all archived files, you'll see the ones here that have got the A on the file attributes have been deselected. Now I've noticed on the menu here it says all archived or on, on these two options, whereas with the files it doesn't. So I'm not 100% sure here, but I'm assuming that that probably selects them across the full directory structure. Now the reason for this is the archive attribute can be used to do a, an incremental backup. So when you run the backup, you can get the system to set the archive attribute on files that have been backed up. Then the next time round when you do another backup, it will only back up files where the archive attribute isn't set. And the, the attribute gets reset every time you overwrite a file or change a file or add a new file into a directory. So any new files or any changes will then be backed up, but any files that have already been backed up, which will have the archive attribute set, will be ignored so that's a very good way if you're wanting to say back up uh, a big hard drive and you don't want to back up everything every time it's a very good way and very efficient way of just backing up what's changed um, another option which I actually missed earlier is this toggle files and all that does it just invert the selection so I'm just going to exclude everything here and I'm going to back up the project X uh, modules that we've got here just the module files and you can see we've got three files selected and then the total bytes for those files if I then go to start backup it will ask me for a name for the backup you don't actually have to give it a name but we will we'll call it modules and then I'll also tick this option here set archive bit on backed up files and that will set this A that's set on some of these other files when the backup's been run. Uh, the send report thing, I'm just going to ignore that for now. So hit OK. The system's done its video loopback check. So I'm just going to put the tape in. So I'll just put the picture in picture on so I can see what's going on with the video recorder. Uh, we'll set that recording and hit the mouse button to start the backup. The splash screen's got the name we gave it, the current date and time of the backup which is probably wrong. And this first bit here, this first burst of data is a file listing of all the files that we've selected for the backup. And you'll see now it pauses for quite a while. 
It then accesses the floppy disk and reads some of the data. And you get quite a, a long pause while it's doing that. And it will then output that data and, and burst that to the screen to be recorded. And then again it will read the next bit of data. Now I don't know if it does this on a per file basis or if it reads it into blocks, a certain size of a chunk of block for the memory, I don't really know. But it does this with the hard drive as well. I don't know why it works this way for file backups, which obviously is very different to how it works for the floppy disk, because it, it tends to output the data as it's reading, which is obviously much more efficient in terms of time and you're going to get more on the tape. Because with this file method there's a lot of time where the video recorder is not recording any data, it's just the test signal. So I don't know quite why it is that it works that way. And this is one of the reasons that a hard drive that probably should only take 15 minutes to back up in terms of the actual size of the data ends up taking half an hour or more. So I shall stop the tape and rewind that. And now we'll go to file system restore. Now on the restore option here you can put the name in and it will only start to read the file list in for the backup that's named. Generally it's, there's no need to do this and I just leave it blank and then it will read in whatever the next backup is. So we hit OK on that. It's then asking for me to hit play on the tape. So we can see our backup screen there. That's the file list and you can see at the top there it said it was reading it in. It then asks you to stop the tape which is one of the reasons I think you get this big gap here so to give you opportunities to do that. I'll turn that off again. So it's read in the tree information which is going to be a directory listing. So we hit OK and then you can see here these are the three files that I chose to back up and they've already been selected so it's basically ready to do a restore of all three of those files and again I can use these options to toggle what files I do or don't want. So let's restore all of them. So we go back up to a menu, start restore to, then it wants a path that we're going to restore the files to. So I'm just going to shove these on the RAM drive just for simplicity's sake. So hit OK and then just wants me to press play on the video recorder again and then it will just go through the restore process same sort of thing really as it does with a, a floppy disk restore. And you'll see there it's starting to read the data in. There we go, that's done. So that's the end of the backup reached. I hit the left mouse button. What's going on? And it's asking about saving a report, which is why it's asked me to put the VBS disk back in. Uh, but we don't need to do that, so I can just abort that. Now if I just drop back down to the workbench screen, and... Ah, I can't do that on here unfortunately, because we don't have the show all files option that we get in Workbench 2, unfortunately. But there are files on the RAM drive, you can see here, it says 206k in use. I'll go to the RAM drive and do a DIR and you can see those those files have been restored to RAM. Now another thing I'll quickly do put the original modules disk back in. If I go to file system backup again and put in df0 again and it'll read the files off the disk again and you can now see those files here that weren't set with the attribute the archive attribute that's now set so if I then did um, exclude all archived, then they will no longer get added to the backup. So this is a good way to then say oh, I want to back up the rest of the files and then chuck those on without taking up more space on the tape. So that's the basic principle of it. You can back up files from any device, it doesn't have to be a floppy disk. I'm just showing the floppy disk just to show that it can be done with a basic Amiga setup. Uh, I mainly bought this VBS because I wanted to back up my A590 and I didn't want to have to use 20 odd floppy, dry, uh, well, floppy disks and go around selecting the files and trying to fit them on the disk and taking ages to do that. And I didn't really trust floppy disks enough to 
to just use floppy disks without say having two or three copies so you would have been looking at 40 50 floppy disks to back up a full hard drive which would have been quite expensive uh, probably would have paid for the VBS or a good part of it and um, we'd already got the video recorder in the household and tapes were fairly cheap so it just seemed to make sense to do this so just as a test I'm just going to come out of here and I'm going to go back into file system backup again I'm going to go to the RAM drive the files are selected and I'm just going to run a backup from here and see what it does so I press the mouse button to continue I'm not recording this to tape, there's no point so that's the file list and then a pause This is a burst of data for one of the files. And then a pause, and then a burst of data for another file. So that's quite interesting because that shows that the gap between those bursts of data for the files was significantly shorter. It was probably a second or so, rather than several seconds that it took when it was reading off the floppy disk. Interestingly, even with the hard drive, these gaps are quite big. Um, I don't know why it works like this, but there probably is some reason. Whether they assume that they need to allow more time to write back out to some of the other d devices like floppy disks or hard drives, so they put a bit of extra sort of time in to allow the system to catch up, I don't know. But that doesn't really make sense because the system can read directly from a floppy disk and output the data simultaneously when you're doing a, you know, a pure uh, sector-based disk backup and restore. So I, I really don't know why it works this way. But it certainly wastes a lot of storage space on the tape and makes the backup take a lot longer than it perhaps otherwise would do. So I've just connected up the A590 and I've booted into my old installation which I recovered during the swag meet. And I'm just going to run VBS from here for a moment. Now, as you can probably see on the screen here, there's a lot of things are all in a bit of a state here. I think this is because I added my backup to an existing installation that was on the hard drive. And what I needed to do is recover the backup to a blank or a formatted hard drive with nothing on it, no workbench, nothing. So that's something I'm going to do. And then in the next video, I'm going to go through my old installation and just have a nosy around and see what we can find. So just out of interest, I'm just going to go into file system backup and I'm going to put in DH0 for the hard drive. So it actually takes quite a while to get the file listing up of the hard drive. But there it is. We can see again at the top here, we've got quite a few directories, files. Uh, it's about 38 megabytes on here. This has actually got three different backups that I've copied onto here into different folders. You can see here we've got an A590 backup one and various files on there and I imagine there'll be a two and a three I think there was and this is all what's on those on those uh, backups that's been recovered different programs and things obviously workbench installation files all manner of different things I assume these are probably samples or something I have no idea um, yeah, so various mod files and things. These are probably copies of what was on the uh, floppy disk that I was looking at earlier, actually. Uh, or these might be samples that have been ripped from demos and games. No telling. And again, with this you can go up here and exclude files. So I could exclude all the files in that directory and then I could go in this one and say, I only want that one. I could then do a toggle, so just that one selected. And then if you go back, to the folders you'll see it, it remembers the selection and the only thing is with this if you wanted to start with no files selected there's not an easy way to do that because if you do exclude files it's just the ones in the root directory it doesn't affect these as well I would have thought the ones in yellow would have been the ones where files are selected but it doesn't appear to be the case so it looks like there's some bugs in the software um, it's not quite behaving how I would have expected it to but 
yeah, it's 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 not bad, but there are there are issues. Uh, which is probably why I always used to do a full a full backup of the hard drive because it was easier. So what I'm going to do now, as I was saying earlier, this installation here is a bit of a mess. Now I've got a copy of all of this that I've imaged off the floppy drive onto a PC. So I've got all these files and backups safe now. So I'm not too concerned about the tape and uh, what's on this A590. Uh, what I'm going to do, it's going to be easier going about it this way at the moment, is I'm going to boot back up off the VBS floppy disk. I'm going to format the A590 so there's nothing on it, and no, no workbench, nothing. And then I'm going to restore my final backup again from the VHS tape. And then hopefully this will be exactly as it was when I last backed it up nearly 25 years ago. And I think probably for the next video I'll just go through this drive and have a look at what's on there. Okay, so let's just format this hard disk if I can remember how to do it. Tools, icons, format disk. Yep. I probably should have done this from Workbench too because I'm pretty sure you get a quick format option there when the uh, disk's already formatted with the file system on it. So that was a bit of a mistake. The hard drive's finally formatted and I've renamed it back to hard disk again. And I've got VBS loaded up in the background. So we're going to file system restore again. Uh, we're not worried about what the backup name is. We're just going to recover the next one on the tape. Uh, just put the screen up for the video recorder. And you should be, be able to see me in VBS nearly 25 years ago there, setting the backup going. Uh, which is aptly named Final Backup. And this will give us the file listing for this backup. So I'll stop the tape again. Hit OK. And then this is the listing of all the files from that backup all that time ago. So I shall go up to Start Restore 2. And this will go to DH0, that will be the root. And that will then put all the appropriate workbench folders and files into the root directory so that Workbench can actually properly boot up then. So I hit OK on that. And then that again will be waiting for me to hit play on the tape, which I'll do. And that will start the recovery process up. Now this is going to take quite a while, so that'll be it again for this video. And I'll go into more details on the A590 and go through my files on here in a later video.